There has been much ado about the Xbox Scorpio ever since we had the reveal of the technical specifications of the machine. Now, of course, we've had several comments from developers, people like ourselves, and so on, but today we've had a series of tweets from the Stardock CEO, Brad Wardell, who spoke about various things, but namely how long he thinks it's going to take developers to really make proper use of the hardware. Now, of course, it's no secret that when a new console is released into the hands of developers, it does take them a couple of years to fully make a proper use of the, har the, the hardware inside, excuse me, and obviously learn the tips and tricks and the, of how the machine actually quote unquote thinks and so on. You know, just for example, compare The Last of Us to an early PS3 game and the two things are like night and day. You know, The Last of Us was like the pinnacle of what that machine can handle and obviously the launch games, while fine, did not look nearly as good at that while performing as well as it did. Now, according to him, the 12 gigs of GDDR5 RAM means that there's not going to be any real limit on games on the platform for a while. Now, of course, this is even with the consideration that only 8 gigs are actually available to developers. And he said, quote, RE Scorpio 12 gigs of GDDR5 memory means for some years no real technical limit on games. Then someone asked, even if only 8 is available. And he said, meh, how many video cards have 8 gigs of GDDR5? Now, of course, there are a fair few that have 8 gigs of GDDR5. The card that I am currently using has that very same amount of memory. But obviously, we're talking about a console here. You know, when, you, when you're developing for a console, you know exactly what you're developing for. And even in the case of a game that is third party and not built for this particular machine, you still know, okay, when we put it on Scorpio, we know it's going to have 8 gigs of RAM, it's going to have this, it's going to have that, whereas obviously a PC could have an unlimited amount of setups and combinations thereof. Now obviously there is more to the Scorpio than just raw power, the fact that DX12 is being built in to the Scorpio is pretty damn huge. Now obviously we've spoken about DX12 at length before, there's a fairly old video from us now that I will link in the description below. I uh, suggest you go give it a look, see if you're at all interested on the ins and outs of DX12. But essentially, it just means that there is better communication between the CPU and the GPU, and it will do numerous things, like improve load times and so on, and a bunch of other things. Now, basically, why would this happen, I hear you ask? Well, essentially, these two APIs, that being DX12 and Vulkan, they are fairly similar, like mirrors of each other if you ask me, obviously there are some differences, but in terms of the improvements they bring to the table, they are definitely in competition I suppose you could say. And these two APIs are able to load graphics assets to the GPU from multiple threads. So basically, with DX12, the GPU can call from multiple threads on the CPU and basically just make things more efficient and just load assets faster and more efficiently, meaning, of course, shorter wait times. This doesn't mean that loading is going to be a thing of the past, you are still going to have to load, it just means that those load times are going to be shorter. And he said, quote, one big feature of DX12 and Vulkan that people don't hear much is that I can load graphics assets to the GPU from multiple threads. Most of your loading screen time today is caused from processing textures and meshes. In DX12 Vulkan, this can easily be done in parallel. So obviously what he's saying what he's saying here rather is that because it can call from multiple threads you know one thread is like oh I'm I'm bringing in the textures and the other thread is like, is like oh I'm bringing in the meshes or whatever and um, if, if even if they're both bringing in the same thing they are still working together in tandem rather than one thread doing all the work by itself as well as obviously everything else that the CPU is being asked to do and obviously just results in a shorter wait better efficiency and all sorts of lovely stuff as well, as well as just obviously just more power, or better use of the power, I suppose you could say. It's not going to, you know, you can't download more RAM to use an ancient meme, but you can make better use of the power that is there by using these low-level APIs. And obviously it's not only just down to the hardware and the APIs that are, of course, going to be down to the software as well, as I kind of inferred earlier in the video. A developer who is making a game only for Scorpio, just for example, and building the engine from the ground up with Scorpio in mind, is going to have a much better time squeezing every last drop they can out of the machine because, well, this engine is built to do that. 
Whereas the person who's making a game that's coming out on PC, PS4, the Switch, or whatever, as well as the Scorpio, obviously they can still make use of the power, the engine can still be optimised and so on, but obviously it's not going to be as flexible and useful within that particular ecosystem because it wasn't necessarily designed for it from the ground up. All that's really been added in are optimizations and perhaps some considerations made for it when they were building the game, but, you know, versus a game that is literally built for only that thing and nothing else and have to worry about compatibility with other systems, it's obviously going to have a leg up versus a third-party multi-platform engine. And Brad said, quote, as a little plug, right now only Stardock and Oxide Games have a shipping core neutral engine and it will take a couple of years to make a AAA level core neutral game to fully utilise the power like Scorpio and APIs like DX12 Vulcan. With Ashes of the Singularity, it was our first real test of Nitrous, our multi-core engine. We love it, but it's not AAA. Meaning that he's basically making the claim that his engine is the only level core neutral engine. But it's not a AAA as much as it is very, very impressive and the game does look very pretty. It is not up to the standards of AAA, at least in his mind. And obviously, he's a CEO. I'm not going to argue with his particular um, definition there. But, you know, you get what he's saying here. But I can't really disagree with him, to be honest, because it's pretty standard for... as. As I said, developers to take a couple of years to really make use of the power of a machine. You know, each time a new console comes out, you kind of have the, you know, an awkward puberty phase of games. Like they look good, but you can kind of tell they're still working out the kinks of this particular project. And then, obviously, to use The Last of Us again as an example, you got the games that are coming out near the end, and they just look amazing in comparison to even the best lookers from the launch. Because you know, these developers have had years; they know this hardware inside out, they know its quirks, they know how to best, you know, exploit it, they know how to squeeze every last drop of performance out of it by this and this trick or this and this piece of code or whatever. And obviously, given that the Xbox Scorpio is a very unique console, and not only its power, but obviously in how it was built to literally fill the gaps left by the Xbox One and fill those weaknesses and basically be a beast of a console... It's definitely going to be extra interesting there, especially when, of course, developers putting for the Scorpio are most likely going to be coming out on another platform as well, you know, even if it is just the PC. So, with all that said, thank you very much for watching. Your support is always appreciated, and I'll see you next time.